Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you the differences between folders versus buses versus groups versus VCAs in Reaper. Now, this topic is one of the most requested that I've gotten. I've shown in other videos how to use buses, VCAs, and especially groups. So, I won't go into great detail in this video. I'm just going to compare the differences when working with multiple tracks and also tell you when I use each choice. And as you'll see, there's a lot of similarities, but each one has its own benefits and drawbacks. So, I have a project in front of me here with four tracks. Now, the first thing I want to show you is how to use folders. To create a folder, we'll make a new track and we'll put it up at the top. That part's very important. You can't create a folder unless it's on top of the child tracks. This is the folder and this will be the child tracks. As long as we do this. Right here, see the folder button? If we click this, all these tracks down here are now in this folder, which means the audio is being routed from these tracks into this. So if I hit mute, we're not going to hear it. If I pull the fader down, it fades out. And if we solo it, we're just going to hear the tracks in the folder, which is more noticeable if I create another track down here and take it out of the folder by clicking this. Now this track is not in this folder. Just these tracks are. So if I hit solo, this track is now muted. And if I hit mute, all these tracks are muted, but not this one, because it's not in that folder. Now, if we look at the routing inside each child track, it's still going to the master parent send. But in parentheses here, we can see that it's going to a folder. In this case, track one, because we haven't named it. And then this track is going at the master parent send. Now, some of the benefits of folders versus other choices is besides that it's quick, you just put things in a folder and quickly create a place for all the audio to go and be adjusted as a group. But you can also hit this triangle right here to change the track height of each of the child tracks. Hit it once and they all get smaller. Hit it again, they get really tiny. So when you're organizing your projects, you could put things in folders and create a much neater looking project. Maybe have a bunch of drum tracks or guitar tracks or vocals. You can make them smaller very quickly by putting them in a folder. Then hit this triangle to make them smaller, tiny, or normal size. And I should also mention, if we go to the mixer, the order of our folders can be changed. Normally, they're going to be in front of the child tracks, but we can right click over here and choose this right here. Group folders to the left, then all the folders in our project are going to be on the left side, which makes it really useful if you create one for your drums, one for your bass, one for your guitars, and so on. All those folders will show up on the left side of your mixer, making them easier to find. If you want to quickly mute them or solo them, they're all going to be on the left side of your mixer. Or if you don't want that behavior, you can just turn it off right here. But there is a downside to folders. Let's say, for example, we're using this track down here as an effects return, maybe for reverb or delay. So maybe we bust all these tracks to it by dragging them from the routing to here, and it defaults to post fader buses. So let's create one for each child track. Let's take this out of the master parent send so I don't hear it. But now, if I play the track, we'll see signal being sent to this track. So, as an effects return for reverb or delay, 
our dry sound is coming from here, and the wet sound is coming from here. But now if we go to our folder and change the level, watch what happens. Even with the fader all the way down, we're still getting full signal. So that relationship between the dry sound from here and the wet sound from here has changed. So if we bring this down even a little bit, it's gonna affect the balance of your effects returns. Now you can go around this by putting effects returns in that same folder. But if you don't wanna do that, you may not wanna use folders. But what you could do, like I usually do, is I keep my folders at zero dB, I don't change them, and then I'll change the volume of my group of tracks a different way. But another great use for folders is to quickly add EQ or other effects to many tracks at once. So in this situation, we have four different tracks. If we wanted to add the same EQ to all of them, we can just put that on the folder. Go right here, go to the Reaper EQ, and now this EQ affects all these child tracks, everything that's in the folder. So that's another great use for a folder. But now let's compare that to buses. Let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of our folder and that track. Now if you're using buses, it's pretty similar. Let's create a track, name it bus. What we do instead to use this, we bustle our tracks by dragging it one by one, or you could do this in the routing matrix if you wanna go quicker. So now all these tracks are going to here, which creates a bus. But if I hit play, it's twice as loud, because we're hearing these tracks and this track at the same time. So if you didn't want that to happen, we take these tracks out of the master parent send. And we could do that just by selecting them all, hold on Alt on the PC, Option on the Mac, click the routing, and all these tracks are no longer going to the master parent send. So now we're gonna hear these tracks just coming through our bus. And just like before, we can mute it and we don't hear it, but notice these tracks are not muted. We don't hear them, but we're not saving any DSP by muting this track. We're just muting the bus that they're all going to. And again, we can solo it and adjust the volume or add effects to the whole thing. Now, one of the benefits of this is we can put the track anywhere. We could put it over here, up top. It doesn't matter. It doesn't need to be in order like a folder. And one of the great uses for this is creating power roll compression. A lot of times what I'll do for drums, let's put this at the bottom. I'll send all my drum tracks to a bus, and then I'll duplicate that bus right here. So all these tracks are being sent to both of these. Then I'll compress and distort this one while leaving this one alone. Then I can balance both of them. This one being dry and unprocessed, and this one being compressed and distorted, which is going to create parallel effects. But we could do the same thing if we delete this one by leaving these tracks in the master parent send. Turn them back on so they're in here. Now we can have the dry sound coming from here and the compressed or distorted sound coming from the bus as we mix this in with these. But like a folder, it has the same problem. Let's take all these tracks out of the master parent send. Now we're just hearing it from here. Let's say we create another track as an effects return. And again, we send all these tracks to that. Now watch the meter over here. Even if we bring this down, it's still sending full signal to our effects return. So just like the folder, buses have the same problem 
when dealing with effects sends and returns. If we bring this down, it messes up the dry versus our wet balance. So it's also not a great choice when dealing with effects sends and returns that are separate from the bus, but it's still very usable for adding effects to many tracks or creating parallel effects processing. But there's still other ways to deal with multiple tracks. Let's delete these two again. Let's put these back to the master parent send. Another thing we could do is we can create a temporary group. We could select these all, hold on shift, and just grab any of the faders. And that'll also control all the tracks at the same time, keeping their relationship intact. We can mute it this way, we could solo them, pan them, and of course change the level. But this is just a temporary group. If we click outside of it, they work separately again. If you want something more permanent, we can create actual groups. So we can select them all, hit Shift G, and from here we can create a group. For now, let's choose all. That's going to create a group that works for all our parameters. So now if I move my fader, they all move together. Or the mute, or solo, or panning. So it's a very useful way of controlling many tracks at the same time. And if we wanted to automate this, we can create envelopes by hitting V, switch the automation mode, let's put it in touch, then we can write envelopes for all the tracks at the same time. But notice it recorded all the envelopes at the same time, not just one. But if we want to create a track that'll control the others, we could do it this way instead. Let's undo that. Let's clear that group. Let's create a new track. Let's put it on the top, although we don't have to. We'll name this master. Open up our group for this track and choose right here, master. So all the parameters are still gonna be controlled by the group, but this track is gonna be the master. Then we can select all these tracks and make them slaves, right over here. So now, this track is gonna control all of these, watch. Again, it kept the relationship of all these tracks with each other, so it kept their balance, but we controlled it all from here. And if we move these tracks, they move separately. So we can still recreate our mix over here and adjust them together from up here. But we should keep in mind, no audio is running to this track. In fact, if I mute this track, we can still hear these. So no audio is going from these tracks to this one. Just this fader or the solo, but whatever we choose is controlling the same parameters on these tracks. That's an important difference. And let me show you why. If we wanted to automate this track, create an envelope for volume, and if I draw an envelope right here, that's only going to affect this track. Check it out. And we can see the change if we switch this to read. Watch how the fader moves. But we don't hear a change because this envelope is not controlling these tracks. If you want it to behave that way, we would do it this way. Let's undo that. We create an envelope for all of them, like that. Then switch this to touch mode, and all the tracks go into touch mode. And all the tracks are going to record automation. So we still can control it 
with this master fader, but each track needs to have its envelope be written to. So we created the same effect. This track is controlling all these, but it's actually writing to them individually. In fact, if I delete this track, it doesn't matter because the individual tracks have the automation or their envelopes already on them. So that's important to realize how that works differently. Now, if you really want the behavior where one track will control many, you probably want to use VCAs. Let me show you that. Let's delete this track and get rid of all well, grouping. And now let's create another track. Put it at the top. Again, it doesn't have to be at the top. We'll name this VCA master. And now while selecting it, go to our groups. And this time we're going to choose right here, VCA master. Then we'll go to these tracks, select them all, and choose VCA slave. So now, this track can also control these tracks, but it does it a bit differently. Check it out. I'll bring the fader down, and it fades out. But if you notice, it doesn't control the faders. These faders stay. Watch. It just controls the volume of all of them. So you might be thinking, these tracks are routed through this track, but that's not really the case. Watch what happens if I mute it. We still hear it. So what's really happening here is this fader is controlling imaginary faders on each individual track. Just pretend there's an extra fader on each one of these tracks. And this fader right here is controlling those. It sounds a bit weird, but it actually makes sense as it solves the problem of our effect sends. So if I create another track down here as an effect return, and I route each one of these tracks to it, like an effect send going to an effects return, hit play, we see the signal here. Now watch what happens if I bring this fader down. It's affecting the sends on each track, and therefore the effect return as well. So if there's an effect over here, like a reverb or a delay, it's going to keep these tracks, the dry tracks, in proportion to the effect. So as we bring this down, the effect is going to go down the same amount. So it's much more usable when dealing with tracks that use effect sends and returns. And also, we can automate this track without automating the individual tracks. Let's create an envelope. And if we draw on it, down here and up and down, watch what happens. Again, the faders don't move, just this one does. Let's move it to read. but we can hear the result. This envelope is controlling the volume on all these tracks. In addition to the volume that's right here, these also work. And if we look at our effects return down here, it's also receiving proportional signal to the level of this envelope. Watch right here. So if it was used for an effect return, it would work perfectly using this method. So it's great for automating many tracks at once, while still keeping the automation on these tracks intact. Let me show you. Let's create envelopes for each of these. Let's draw some automation on each one. It can be different. Up and down, down and up. Now we can keep this automation intact and create new automation for the group. So let's clear this. Create a new one. 
Now we could write just this track, and it's going to affect the balances here as a group. And what's even better is we could apply this envelope to the individual tracks and then clear this. Let's go to our action list, type VCA. There's a few actions right here that work with VCAs. We can apply all the VCAs from selected tracks to group tracks and reset the volume, pan, or mute. So if we choose this one, let's make it smaller. Let's choose this track. If we choose this, it's going to apply this envelope to the individual envelopes. Let's make it more subtle. Let's make it a little bit higher. And watch what happens down here. They stay intact, but they adjust themselves based on the VCA. Let's undo it. And let's redo it. See what happens? Each one changes based on this. And we could do it as many times as we want. So if you want to rewrite automation as a group, we could do that and either hear the result or apply it using this. And they all change to match what we did up here. It's a very powerful feature. And like I said, it's very usable when you have effects sends and returns on the tracks you want to group. But because there's no audio running through the VCA master, we can't put effects there because they're not going to apply to our group. Let's undo all this. So to sum it up, at least for my personal preferences and my uses, I like to use folders for organization purposes. So I could put a track up here, create a folder, so I can make the track smaller or tiny or bigger. I could also mute the tracks very quickly or solo them or add effects to them like EQ or filters. But what I tend not to do is adjust the fader. That's my personal preference. This way I don't have to deal with any of the effects sends and returns losing their relationship to each other. Now for buses, I tend to use them for parallel compression or parallel distortion, where I'll create a few tracks, bus all these tracks to both of them, take these tracks out of the master parent send, and use one track as a dry track, another one for heavy compression or distortion, and create parallel effects using this method. Or sometimes I'll use busing for creating headphone mixes, or obviously for effects sends and effects returns. Now as far as grouping, I'll use grouping for similar tracks. So I'll select them all to create a temporary group, or create a group right here, and group them all together. So I can move their faders all at the same time, or mute them, or solo them. But if I want to automate them and have them controlled by another track, that's when I use VCAs. So I'll get rid of this, create a new track as the VCA master right here, and make these the VCA slave, and control their level as a group right from here. It's a lot more useful when using automation or creating envelopes. But what you could also do with this is add in mutes and solos. So you could still treat them as a group. Mute all the tracks together, solo them all, or control them with one fader. So that's VCAs. And again, there's no actual audio running through this fader. This fader is just controlling imaginary faders on each one of these tracks, which makes it a lot more useful when you're dealing with effects sends and effects returns that aren't part of the same group. 
So that's pretty much it. That's folders versus buses versus groups versus VCAs. I hope this video made the subject a bit clearer, and I hope you can use some of the methods that we've gone through. So thank you for joining me, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Oh!